Questions 49 and 51 in the ACERT green paper. Question 49. The activation energy is represented in figure 1 by. So essentially we have this graph representing the energies of the reactants and products and the transition state and we're asked to find which part represents the activation energy. So the activation energy is represented here in red. It is the energy needed to go from the reactant state to the transition state. So it's this little boost of energy that we need. Um, the change in free energy or Gibbs free energy is going to be the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. So therefore, if we are trying to uh, represent the activation energy in terms of this E1 and E2, uh, we're going to say that the activation energy is going to be E1 minus E2. So uh, therefore, A is the correct answer for question 49. Question 50. So there's a couple of important things to note in question 50. One is that um, the temperatures must always be in kelvins. And that's just always true, sort of, uh, well, true for most of the time for chemistry, um, but particularly true in this case because the R constant um, given to us is given in kelvins and not degrees Celsius. So we've got to convert these respective temperatures, uh, 32 degrees Celsius and 22 degrees Celsius, into the Kelvin form. So we go from this equation, which they've given us, um, to this. So I've rounded 2.303 down to 2.3, just for simplicity. Um, and I've inserted 10 into this part. So that's because um, each of these rate constants represents the rate at these respective temperatures, T2 and T1. And we know that T2... I uh, say so that the rate of reaction at T2 is 10 times quicker than at T1. So therefore, um, we're going to have 10 on 1, essentially making it um, just 10 in those brackets. What we therefore get uh, after that, sorry, is we get uh, the activation energy on 8.31. So that's the value of R. Um, and in the brackets, in the place of T2 minus T1 is 10 because T2 is 10 degrees larger than T1 and the respective um, temperatures in that bottom part. So you get this, you sort of go through all the working out. Um, I've again rounded 295 and 305 to 300. So 300 times 300 gives us 90,000. Um, again, you can, you're allowed to do this in the gamma set just because uh, one, you don't have a calculator and two, even if you do a lot of rounding, the answer that you'll get in the end will be the same. Um, and that's because A, B, C, and D, they all differ by a factor of 10 or more. So uh, now that we have uh, rounded them off, we can continue on. So 2.3 times 8.3 is equal to 19. So I've times both sides by that 8.3, getting out of the bottom there. Um, and we get 19 is equal to uh, activation energy times 1 on 9 times 10 to the 3. So um, from there, you get, uh, you times across the 9 times 10 to the 3, giving us 171 times 10 to the 3 as our activation energy. So therefore, 1.7 times 10 to the 5 is equal to our number of joules. Therefore, uh, uh, and then again, I've rounded it up to 2 just for um, the sake of simplicity and that because the answers don't give um, the activation energy in two decimal in any decimal point sorry it's always a whole number so I've just rounded up and you get 2 times 10 to the 5 joules which is equal to 200 kilojoules thus making D the correct answer for question 50. Question 51 uh, assume that the rate of reaction increased by a factor of 10 when the temperature increased by 3 degrees for a larger temperature increase, the rate of the same reaction is found to increase by a factor of 100. Which of the following temperature increase was most likely produced a 100 fold increase in the rate of reaction. So every time we increase the temperature by 3 degrees, so say we start at 1 degree and we go to 4, our rate of reaction is going to um, times itself by 10. So what happens if we add 3 degrees onto this temperature of 4 degrees? So we go from um, 1 to 7. Sorry, we go from 4 to 7. So what would happen is we'd also expect our rate of reaction to increase by 10. So we go from 10 to 100. 
Now let's look at the overall change in um, temperature and rate of reaction. So overall, we have added, sorry, overall we have added uh, six degrees, and overall our rate of reaction has gone up by one hundred. So therefore, the correct answer for question fifty-one is A, six degrees, because um, in order to get a hundredfold increase overall, we need to increase our temperature by six degrees.